everyone, today I want to show you how you can set up um, a React Native project using Expo uh, and uh, specifically set it up with Aerostream with JavaScript. Um, this can sometimes be complex, especially because you need to install the Indie SDK, which has native dependencies. Um, and we've seen this, uh, yeah, has caused a lot of issues uh, in the past. Um, a while ago, we created a plugin for Expo that allowed you to um, yeah, install the Indie SDK with um, um, a simple plugin. And we think that will help make the setup easier. And today I'll um, use Expo and that plugin to set up a React Native uh, project. So um, we can just follow setting up the development environment start. So we want to start with creating an Expo project. Um, um, so I'll copy this command. And um, I'm going to provide the template property because I want to create a TypeScript project. So I can now select blank TypeScript project and I'll call it expo-afj. So then it will uh, start installing all needed dependencies. Um, the reason why I like Expo um, uh, over just playing React Native is that um, it allows you, uh, there's a few reasons. One is their managed uh, infrastructure, which allows you to build on their cloud, uh, so you can build Android or um, even iOS applications, even if you don't have a macOS laptop, because you'll just upload it to their service, and then you can download the build binary, even share them with your teammates, um, so you don't have to create new builds every time, just when your native dependency changes. Um, another one is the pre-built command, which allows you to um, generate the native iOS and Android directories for your project. Um, if you just use plugins and never modify them manually, which we tried to do um, um, at Animal always, um, which allows you then to generate them and you don't even have to commit your iOS and Android directories. This makes updating React Native versions a lot easier because it's just a JavaScript code, not manually seeing like which of the native um, React Native files changed and um, it also uh, means yeah, your your um, Git uh, repo is just a lot smaller and focuses on the files that you actually change uh, instead of having a lot of boilerplate and, and template code. All right, so now that it is installed, we can uh, open the project. Uh, I'll open it in, in VS Code. Um, let's put it in full screen. And now we basically have an, an empty uh, Expo project. Um, um, doesn't have a lot yet, um, but these are all the files that are in the project. And, and what we want to do now is uh, install in the SDK and add errors framework JavaScript. So um, to do that, um, let's go to the AFJ setup. This is the setup um, um, on errors.js.org and follow the React Native uh, install commands. Um, so let's see. We'll uh, go into the Expo FJ directory. We'll add all needed dependencies and those will be installed. Um, and while that is happening, we can go back to the additional setup. Um, these are all also for React Native. You need to follow them. Um, try to make it very clear in which steps you need to take. So we need to import the random values in an index file. Um, so we have a um, um, app.tx6 where we can import the random values um, and then we also need to update the metro config um, uh, which isn't here yet so we first need to um, pre-build um, the first time so um, in addition to installing the AFJ dependencies, we need to install the plugin. So uh, that's what we can do next. We have a an Animo uh, in the SDK extra plugin. Um, we have documentation uh, and we're going to use the 020 version of this, which works with the latest in the SDK React Native and the latest Expo uh, SDK. We'll add the plugin uh, to our um, project as a dev dependency. So uh, let's open a terminal. Um, and we can add it as um, 
dev dependency that will add it to the project. And then if we look at the other setup, we need to add it to the app.json. Um, so uh, this is the configuration to configure your Expo app. Um, and we can add the plugin here. Um, so now it's added. And then for iOS, we need to disable bitcode uh, for it in the framework. We can do that uh, inside the Expo iOS bitcode and set it to false. So now our project is um, fully configured. Then um, what we can do next is um, we can pre-build um, our project for the first time. So if I now run this, it will ask what uh, will the package name be uh, for the native project and it will add it also to my uh, configuration. So it will install the dependencies um, needed for the native project. So it, it will add some extra dependencies to your package JSON so you can use native code instead of just the JavaScript from Expo. And we'll also install the cow pods. Um, so next thing, uh, once it's installed, we need to finish the, the uh, AFJ setup because this uh, Metro config is for uh, when you have native code. Um, and uh, if we go to VS Code, we now have a Metro config and it just uses the default one. And we need to make sure that we extend it a bit. So um, the easiest way is to take the default config and uh, just override it. So we'll uh, use the spread operator of where to, um, yeah, just add the one value we need, uh, okay. uh, which is in this case the CJS um, extension. Um, right. So now we've just added. Uh, it to the to the one and then we actually this one I just pasted it in the app.tsx um but that needs to be in the index jsx uh, or the js file um and this just makes sure we have secure um random generator um right so what we um as you can see there's a lot of files generated for android and ios in our git um if you make custom changes to these directories, you need to keep them in. But um, for now, as we um, just generate the project, and I think in most cases, this, this is possible, you can actually ignore these um, from your project. Um, and we just generate them every time um, we need it. So as you see, the skips are changed as clean. Um, and uh, yeah, these files are ignored. Um, so then, because we've made some changes, we'll uh, run um, the pre-built command again. This will uh, update all the configurations. And um, now we're actually ready to start building the project. Um, so if we want to run it on Android, we can run Yarn Android and it will run it on a simulator. Uh, the build command can take a while, especially if you don't have um, good internet the first time. Um, uh, mainly because, uh, let me see what's going wrong here. Oh, I think I forgot a important setup step is um, this one. Um, if you're using Yarn, you can work around it, but there's a problem with one of the dependencies um, that depends on a legacy Expo um, uh, packet, and we need to actually point it to a no-op. Um, so in our project, I create a nullup directory, place a dot git keep file in it. So it's actually committed because otherwise every time you clone it, uh, this folder won't be there anymore. And then I need to add the resolutions here. Um, this is really a hack um, um, and hopefully we can resolve it soon. But for now you will just fix it if using yarn by adding the res resolutions key to your project. Um, so with that, we can now um, run the build command again. And it will start building the project. This can take a while and it sometimes needs to... Uh, of course, then we need to um, 
run yarn again and we need to uh let's be toro um run the pre-built command again so every time um you change something about your yarn packages or native dependencies you probably need to regenerate the project again um oftentimes native dependencies at least in our case don't change that often uh, we usually create one build and then we can use that for uh, um, development because the javascript code changes more often so with that done we can now start the uh, android build and this may fail again because it needs to download some things and um but this is running now and um in the meantime, we can set up um, our agent. So uh, if we go back to the setup, there is setting up the agent. Um, we can just use this to test it in a bit. So I'll pick the React Native um, and let's add a agent.ts file. And this sets up an agent with wallet and everything, and we'll just export it. We don't want to initialize it here yet. And then in the app.psx, we can add a use effect. Um, this is just for demo purposes. We're not gonna actually use the agent uh, in, in this term uh, tutorial, but um, what we can do, we can import the agent, we can initialize it, and then we do an alert uh, that just says agent initialized. If the agent is initialized, we can be sure the setup of the Indie SDK innate dependencies went well because it will open a wallet and everything. So that's just our set test setup now with the simple agent uh, from the setup. Um, all right. Um, I'm gonna skip I had here a bit because the downloading of um boost can take a while, especially on my current internet. All right, the download has finished now and um, it's in the last steps of building the project. The first time it always takes the longest because it will download a lot of uh, dependencies and, and cache to me your node modules, but um, uh, like other time wouldn't take so long. So um, once it's done building, it will uh, run it on the emulator. It's bundling and loading the project. And if all is well, yeah, it now alerts agent initialized. So that means we now have a project set up with um, Expo and Airstream with JavaScript. And, and we don't need to touch any native code um, to set this up. Um, in a future video, I would like to go a bit deeper on Expo and using their build services um, um, uh, and ask uh, like expo application services and how you can uh, work without native code um, and um, build in the cloud um, but for now i think this will um, um, already help a lot in setting up your project and and making it easy to set up uh, we use expo um, more and more for internal projects. Um, we have a demo wallet also built with this and, and it allows us to move quickly, make make changes easily, modify it a bit, um, and also share build with each other through um, the cloud build infrastructure. So thanks for watching and let me know if you're running into any issues.